Star Wars, The Heart of the Jedi, by Kenneth C. Flint. Chapter 1 The vast silence of that planetless sector of space was pierced through with the sizzling noise of laser fire as a huge craft glided suddenly into view. It was a victory-class Star Destroyer of the Empire, and it was engaged in a savage fight. The powerful battleship was a massive, sharply, sharply angled wedge of metal. The keen spear tip of its long prow thrust far into the empty dark ahead. The sides of its broadening hull bristled with rows of turbo laser batteries. These were all firing frantically now, spewing out a blazing network of ruby colored bolts. But those bolts were not directed at some target ahead. They were all being fired towards the rear, and other bolts of a brilliant emerald hue were being returned, crisscrossing the Imperial fire. And then, the source of this other fire hove into view close astern. The Star Destroyer was not giving chase. It was being hotly pursued. The pursuer was an MC-80 Liberty-type Mon Calamari cruiser, another battleship, but one of uh, pelagic design with a blistered over oval hull. Though an organic-looking and well-designed craft in contrast with the hard-edged bulk of the Imperial ship, it was still a fair opponent for the other man of war. In fact, as the two dreadnoughts sailed on, locked in furious battle, it became quickly obvious that the Star Destroyer was vastly overmatched. The intersecting exchanges of broadsides that wove brilliant latticework across the blackness caused many more blooming flashes of hits upon the Imperial than on its foe, and the pursuer was slowly but relentlessly closing in. The frequency of its hits was soon creating a constant fireworks display across the Star Destroyer's sides and rear. They were inflicting much damage, destroying systems and power supplies, their accumulated effect crippling the Imperial ship. A particularly well-aimed bolt from the Hunter's forward battery struck home squarely on the rear of its prey's upthrusting command tower. A great flower of sparks erupted there as the strike's impact shook the whole superstructure. Within it, on the ship's main bridge, the dark-uniformed command crew was sent reeling. Its captain, a lean and hawk-nosed man grabbed the edge of a console, barely in time to keep himself from falling. Face flushed as much by frustration as rage, he turned to shout out at his crew. Where are those shields? Full power to the bridge shields! Another young officer stepped up to him. Captain, they're over overreaching us, he said in a voice that could not hide his alarm. Their fire is breaking through. We cannot win. The captain turned to himself in disbelief. You suggest we surrender, Commander, he snarled out. To that scum? You sound a coward, man. Back to your post. Keep all fire at maximum. The young officer, clearly stung by the rebuke, snapped a salute and wheeled away, but staggered as yet another, even more massive laser strike rocked the craft. Outside, the entire stern of the great warship was engulfed in a spectacular blossom of flaming debris spreading outward from the explosion of the ship's central engine cone. The intense fire of the attacker had found a vital point at last. On the Imperial's bridge, a second junior officer checked the damage report on his view screens and looked to his captain in consternation. Captain, our main drive systems have failed, he reported. We're losing headway. The young commander consulted the indicators on his own console. A rear-view monitor above him showed the pursuing ship, its size swelling very fast now as it moved in. They're closing in, sir, he all but shouted to the captain in his fear. Grappling beams are locking on. The captain's face drew into grim but determined lines as he rapped out the ominous order. Prepare to repel borders. Through the stark gray corridors of the Imperial ship, the harsh sound of a klaxon blared. From everywhere at once, swarms of armed men, armed men swiftly appeared, forming a swirling torrent of black-uniformed crewmen and white-armored stormtroopers, all rushing purposefully through the ship to their assigned positions. While they moved to defensive spots within, without, the attacking warship was drawing close. It slid up along the Star Destroyer, which was now little more than drifting ahead in space. Soon, it was running parallel, the side hulls of the two craft only a few hundred yards apart, their turbo-laser batteries still exchanging pounding barrages of fire. The overwhelming majority of that fire, however, was coming from the attacker's side. By this time, many of the Imperial guns had been blasted into silence. Their few answering bolts were all but ineffectual. The hunter matched speeds with its prey, 
seeming for a moment to hang suspended, motionless, beside the other ship. Then it began to slip sideways, closing the gap between. Inside the Star Destroyer, the troopers and crewmen were reaching their positions. One company formed up in a corridor's end before a large outer bulkhead door. They moved into a defensive perimeter, creating a formidable, formidable barrier. The heavier armed stormtroopers at the front. Not far beyond the wall they faced, the side of the attacker's ship was just drawn within a, within a few score yards of theirs. As it did so, its turbolaser batteries fell abruptly silent. At the same moment, several round hatches spaced along the sleek curve of the ship's hull slid open. From within, menacing-looking appendages popped forth and grew rapidly outward, swelling into long, flexible conduits which stretched across like monstrous, groping tentacles to touch, then grab onto the Imperial ship's side. Hey Zappa, welcome to the stream. As one of them made contact right atop an outer door, the troopers and crew now poised in defensive perimeter within it heard the loud clang of the conduit locking on. They all looked sharply towards the sound. Apprehension showed briefly in the faces of some of the crew, but all quickly steeled themselves and prepared for battle. Blasters were raised and held ready, the click of safeties being snapped off and the rising hum of weapons being loaded sounded loud in the narrow space. For a dozen tense heartbeats, the ready men stared expectantly at the bulkhead door. Nothing happened. But in the next instant, the door was gone, blown inward by a compact but efficient explosion that rent it to flaming debris and sent smoke billowing forward, filling the corridor. The Imperials winced back from the blast, but stood stalwartly fast, peering through the pall of smoke into the new blackness behind the ragged opening. Figures appeared there, only vague shadows at first. One moved forward. The first defenders, the stormtroopers, began to fire their bolts angling into the rolling gray. In response, an odd, angry buzzing sound suddenly arose. At the same time, a short green beam of light came into being, one figure sweeping it around with the smoke, swinging out to parry the blaster shots with astounding speed, sending them bouncing away. The troopers stared, ceased firing, momentarily nonplussed. In the brief lull, the one figure acted, rushing forward from the smoke into full view. It was a man in a jet-black uniform, a helmet with lowered blast visor over his head. He leapt swiftly and agilely into the first rank of the waiting troopers. The long blade of green light he held swung around from side to side with great swiftness and unerring aim, drawing glowing arcs in the hazy air, crackling with power as it struck opponents, slashing some foes down, throwing the rest into a panic. Other helmeted figures clad in light blue began to pour through the breach behind the first, firing about with blasters at the rest of the now disorganized defenders. A few stormtroopers tried to stand their ground, but were shot down. The others turned and ran. The boarding party clambered aboard the body, clambered across the bodies of the slain, and started in pursuit, the black-clad one at the head. As they began their push into the body of the ship, other doors in the outer bulwarks were being blown at several points, and other companies of soldiers were pouring in to engage the Imperial crew in vicious combat. The separate parties of boarders blasted their way across the ship's corridors, smashing any resistance. Hundreds of Imperials were soon streaming through the ship in wild retreat, knocking, each, knocking down each other in panic, trampling on helpless little cubes of service droids that squealed fearfully as they tried to scramble from the way. At a central point where many corridors joined, several of the streams became a massive flood, pouring away to more remote, safer innards of the ship. From two of the corridors, pursuing groups of the boarders appeared, driving the fleeing men ahead of them at a full charge, all but colliding through the crossing point. The black-clad leather with the blade of light gave a quick wave of greeting to the second group. Then, he led their combined force on in the pursuit. On the Imperial Bridge, panic reigned. The young commander, now openly gripped by his fear, stepped up to his senior officer. Captain! They're routing our men, he said in a quavering voice. They're moving through the ship with great speed. I suggest we... But before he could complete his suggestion, the shrill, sharp whistle of blaster fire sounded from beyond the main entrance to the bridge. The two men jerked around to see a stormtrooper stumbling back through the doorway, 
chest smoking from a blaster strike. Other troopers and crewmen began to pour through, shooting behind them, following onto the bridge by the flicking tongues of returned blaster fire. The Imperials had not even time to mount a new defensive inside the door, before the boarding warriors were shouldering their way through the opening. Troopers and crewmen could only scramble for shelter behind equipment and control consoles. Still, fired by final desperation, they mounted a spirited resistance from there. A wild and deadly melee erupted on the bridge as the attackers poured in, spreading out to engage. The trapped Imperials fought on doggedly, throwing up a blinding wall of fire. Great numbers of their blaster bolts struck home on the invading enemy. Many combatants fell on both sides. Bodies scorched and limbs severed by the energy blasts were strewn thickly across the pebbled metal floor. Errant shots struck consoles, equipment, monitors, and machines, raising explosions of sparks and fire. Through the chaos moved the Imperial captain, evading blaster shots and falling men, crawling behind the shelter of his command console and crouching there. Beside him, the young commander crouched too, but rising at times to fire his hand blaster out at the enemy at their enemies. For a time, there seemed to be a stalemate. Then, the one in black wielding the blade of light moved out from the rest. He advanced into the center of the room with seeming recklessness, parrying blaster fire to strike out at the stubborn defenders with ruthless efficiency. No defense could stop him. No shot could reach him. In a few bloody moments, only a handful of Imperials were left. The commander lifted up to try for a shot, but was hit by one of the attackers. He crumpled, dropping his blaster. His captain saw the weapon, seized it, and rose into view. Halfway across the bridge deck from him stood the figure with the blade of light. Warrior and captain saw each other at the same time. Surrender, the black-clad one called to him. The captain drew himself up proudly, defiantly. To you, he spat back contemptuously. Never. His hand swung the blaster up to the point, and he opened fire. His hasty first shot went wide of the dark figure, but it did strike a blue-uniformed one moving up behind. The blast hit his chest square on, its force lifting the soldier and slamming him down. Before the captain could fire again, the black-clad one hurled his glowing saber forward. It flew swiftly with a rolling hum of sound as it spun end over end, flashing to its goal so fast that the captain hadn't even time to flinch. It struck with a bright, bright flare of power, the blade of light slashing down through the man from shoulder blade to heart. His smoking corpse toppled limply to the deck. A great stillness fell suddenly upon the bridge. The battle was ended, the last defenders down. The victors stood weltering amidst the awful wreckage of sprawled bodies and blasted co controls. The black uniformed man strode forward, his boots on the metal deck clanking loud in the quiet. He bent down over the dead captain's body to take up the glowing weapon that lay beside it. For a long moment the warrior stood motionless, the lethal blade of light in hand, looking much a figure of great and terrible power there, surrounded by the sparks and smoke of the dead of that hellish room. Then he turned, swinging round towards the group of his fellow warriors who stood watching him. With a snap, the blade of light went off, shrinking in an instant into its metal hilt. The hands of the warrior lifted towards his head. They grasped his helmet, lifting its free of its head that it had been shielded beneath. The features revealed were those of Luke Skywalker.